Hey everyone, welcome to The Horror Show. I'm Cecil Laird, here to do a review for you guys of the brand new season one. <laughs> brand new season one, that's right. I'm saying brand new season one because this is of a reboot of a classic sci-fi TV show, Lost in Space. It has recently been rebooted yet again here on Netflix, which to me was an exciting prospect when I first heard about it. We did a trailer reaction on the channel. Uh, personally, I never watched the original TV series Lost in Space, but I did watch the movie from the 90s, 97, 98, whatever it was, um, and I actually quite enjoyed it. Uh, I didn't have the baggage from the TV show or anything like that, but at the time I remember really digging the idea, and so when I found out that Netflix was doing an updated version of Lost in Space, and then we watched the trailer for it, I was like, yeah, that looks really cool. So. The, the, the season dropped on April 13th, and I couldn't help it. I watched the first episode, and I ended up barreling through the entire series. It's only 10 episodes, but I bar barreled through it uh, within about three days. It is so good, you guys. I really, really, really like Lost in Space. Um, so I'm going to break this down like we normally do our reviews. I'm not going to go in depth on like an episode by episode thing. This is just sort of an overall overview of season one. I'm not going to spoil anything, uh, but I am going to just sort of, you know, let you know some things that might whet your appetite as it were, uh, and let you know why you should be taking the time to watch this because, um, you know, honestly, I've, I've muddled my way through uh, part of Jessica Jones season two. Um, the Marvel show, like the Marvel shows on Netflix are where my level was as far as, you know, shows to match, but that was talking, you know, early Daredevil stuff, Defenders, Iron Fist, and Jessica Jones season two have all been pretty lackluster for me, so I was looking for something else that brings back my, my, my binge craving, and this Lost in Space satisfied my binge need, uh, tremendously. I dug the hell out of this series, so... Um, we're going to break this down, or I'm going to break this down like uh, we normally do here on the horror show. We're going to do overall thoughts, which as I just said, I really, really enjoyed. I'll talk about the story, I'll talk about the acting, I'll talk about the effects, the cinematography, the music, all that stuff in turn. Uh, but uh, but yeah, the overall thoughts were, uh, as I said, I really enjoyed it. The, the characters were all very pleasing to me. Uh, one of them... I thought was a little, you know, wavering, but I think that's the purpose of the character. Um, there was another character that was sort of a dark horse that, that ended up being one of my favorites, and um, I don't know if he was a part in the original series back in the day, because he's not part of the core Robinson family, but he ended up being a character I, I really cared about. So um, the characters were likable, the, the effects were amazing, the premise is really cool, the fact that every almost every episode ended on a cliffhanger that I was like, oh, I gotta keep going, like, that is the hallmark nowadays to me of good TV, and this absolutely had that in spades. Um, and from episode one, I, I was genuinely hooked, and uh, I will say that the, the biggest reason for it is that um, this relationship right here, uh, Will Robinson and... The robot, who never gets named Robbie, by the way, so don't worry about that. But Will Robinson and the robot, that relationship is what brought me into the series. And while it didn't, it didn't, it wasn't the only reason I kept watching because I ended up liking everyone else too, pretty much. Um, it was still the heart of the series, and I loved that. I loved that they did that so. Uh, in such an accomplished way. Um, so anyway, yeah, let's get into the acting of it. I, I really, really thought the acting was was very good. Um, the whole Robinson family are, are engaging to watch. So I'm going to pull up a couple pictures so you can see. Um, so uh, on the picture on the right here, down at the bottom right, from right to left, uh, I'm going to tell you who everyone is. So on the right is Judy Robinson. Um, the, the guy to her right, or to our left, uh, is actually the, the, the character that I'm talking about that's not part of the Robinson family, but uh, does end up showing up and is a character you end up really caring about. Uh, next to him is uh, John Robinson, right? I believe that's, uh, that's his name. I want to make sure I get it right. So 
Uh, yeah, John Robinson, played by Toby Stevens. Um, and, of course, Judy Robinson is played by Taylor Russell. Um, so uh, then, or no, I'm sorry, that's Penny, not Judy. That's Penny Robinson on the right. Penny and Judy, I kept getting their names mixed up for some reason. Um, but, yeah, so Penny Robinson on the right, uh, the redhead. Uh, and then, um, let's see, I can find out who that guy's name is. Uh, Don West, that's Ignacio Sericio. So that's who this character's name is, his Don West. And then John Robinson, uh, to our, you know, his back to us is little Will Robinson. Then we have Maureen Robinson. Uh, Maureen Robinson is played by Molly Parker, and Will Robinson is played by Maxwell Jenkins. And then you have, uh, then you have Judy Robinson. Uh, Taylor Russell plays Judy Robinson in the back here on the very left. Um, if you look at this picture here, it's Maureen at the bottom right, uh, Will, and then Judy at the bottom, and then Penny next to uh, John. So these are the Robinsons, and then that's Don West in that picture there. So um, all of the Robinsons I thought were great because um, the, the, the show does play a, not, not fully like a family drama, but there are uh, family, you know, interplay uh, aspects that they need to address and they do and from the very first episode everyone is set on sort of a path of things that they have to overcome for the season like it was really brilliantly done um, apparently John is a sort of military man who has been away from the family for a while the the whole story behind Lost in Space I kind of skipped over the entire story didn't I um, well let me jump back to that so the story of Lost in Space is that um, something happens, a meteor hits the earth and changes the atmosphere and essentially we are forced to launch into space to try and colonize Alpha Centauri, which, um, which has you know, a planet that is uh, uh, you know, enough like earth that we can try and restart over again. Now it's not that earth is uninhabitable, but there are significant changes and limitations now. So part of the human race is trying to move on the Robinson family qualifies, as it were, and, uh, and so they are part of one of the Jupiter missions. They're, the, the different family ships are each on a Jupiter ship, uh, part of the Resolute, which is a giant mobile space station that houses all of the Jupiter ships, um, that they will be used to con colonize Alpha Centauri. Um, and at the very beginning, something goes wrong with the mission, and... Um, the, the, the Resolute is rendered immobile and, uh, all of the Jupiter ships or a lot of the Jupiter ships tumble out of the Resolute and end up crash landing on this planet. In the very first episode, they all end up crash landing on this planet. Um, and, uh, and it is in uncharted space. So everyone is lost in space, but there are multiple sort of spaceship crews um, scattered around this planet, the Robinson crew is just one ship. So you're following them, and they do encounter other people along the way, which is awesome. It's engaging. It it brings you further into the story, and it and it 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 doesn't limit you to just those five family characters. And then they also introduce. Um, they do a little bit of a twist uh, compared to the both the '90s movie and the original TV show, where Doctor Smith is this sort of crazy he ends up being the pseudo villain of the group although he's he's stuck traveling with the robinsons but he is constantly trying to do bad stuff um, that is both the case in the movie and the original show however they throw you a curveball in this one <coughs> dr smith as it were is played by parker posey that's right it is a female this time around and not only that, but it's a female who, in, as you see her introduction, you see why she's not quite the Dr. Smith that you expect. So now getting back to the acting, again, the family is done, uh, it, it, uh, they're all really great actors. Don West is a great actor, and I thought that the Dr. Smith um, is, it, Parker Posey does a great job as well. So the acting is all really top notch in this series. So for that alone, it's pretty much worth your time to, to sit down and watch it, but uh, of course, being a sci-fi show, the effects uh, carry a tremendous amount of weight, and um, there are effects in spades. There's both practical effects and CG effects, and then there's blendings of the two. Uh, the most impressive of which, I have to say, is the robot. The robot. <laughs> 
Um, they do such cool stuff. Like the first time you see the robot, it it feels clearly CG, but throughout most of the series, because he has a couple of different forms, as it were, and then in the normal form where he's just walking around sort of protecting Will Robinson, uh, he looks so good and he's definitely a practical effect. He's got to be someone in a suit, but there are times when you can like see through him and stuff. Like it's, it's so amazing. So it's clearly a physical pr uh, practical effect that is assisted with digital uh, manipulation via the seeing through of him and stuff like that. It's just done so well that it, 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 if it is CG more than I think, then it's so accomplished that you, you'd be hard pressed to even tell. It is just so good and it does not draw you out of the series at all. So that in itself is, is, is really cool. Now, I know, again, it's a sci-fi show, but there are definitely horror parts of the show, and a lot of that has to do with the creatures on the alien planet. Some of them, again, tying into the effects, some of them are CG, some of them are practical. But all of them end up being convincing by their own right, and they all mesh together very well. Uh, there's some very tense moments. There's some very scary moments that would be right at home in any horror movie, especially recently in A Quiet Place. There's a, a very Quiet Place-esque uh, episode that has to do with the humans needing to accomplish a task while being very quiet lest they disturb creatures. And it is really cool to see them uh, do stuff like that in, you know, a, a big budget sci-fi show. And... The big space effects, the spaceship effects, all of that is very big budget looking. Like, they, it does not appear that they skimped, at least in my estimation. I'm not always the best at saying the CG is terrible, because if it's passable and I enjoy it and it doesn't draw me completely out of the movie, then I give it a pass most times. But uh, that's not the case with everyone. So uh, I thought that the effects were amazing and uh, I really, really dug it. Now, besides all that, there is, of course, the cinematography, which was gorgeous. I mean, the, the art direction of the show, uh, the, the, the CG environments that they set up, combined with the camera movements, the reveals, the beautiful, you know, uh, slow-moving reveal shots, the, the, the actual, you know, the shots when people are talking and stuff like that. It's just very accomplished cinematography. Again, does not frustrate you when there's times when you need to feel cramped or like enclosed in with a character. They do that very well. A prime example in the very first episode, what happens to Judy. Uh, it is really uncomfortable and crazy and a lot of that has to do with how the camera is framed. And then again, the beauty and the terror of the creatures oftentimes, how it's framed. So the cinematography was gorgeous and it worked hand in hand with creating drama and tension and comedy and action and everything in the show. Everything just really coalesced in such a tremendous way that I, I cannot recommend this series enough to you guys. If you have even a, a passing interest in sci-fi, then you absolutely owe it to yourselves to try it. Try the first episode. If you aren't hooked after the first episode, then fine. You know the show's not for you. But if, if you like the first episode, then you know it's worth the time to, uh, to check it out. So uh, make sure that you do. If you haven't done so, give it a try. Uh, if you have watched it, let me know in the comments down below what you thought. Uh, or if this review maybe swayed you one way or another, but you just haven't watched it yet, let me know that too. I'd be curious to hear your guys' opinion. Until next time though, I've been Cecil Laird, and remember, stay scared!